Game one of six officially underway and on your screen, all 100 players. Arguably the biggest day of their entire lives. The average age of competitors, just 16 years old. If you're a younger fan here in the audience, you dream of one day being here. If you're the same age, you look to your peers as people to look up to and aspire to be as good as one day. If you're a parent, I'm sure you can imagine what's going through these kids' minds. Here we go, folks. Tifu on your screen. Block has been his place forever, Dr. Lupo, and he is not shying away here in game number one. I had a chance earlier during warm-ups to just talk to Tifu about this landing zone. The opinion was basically, I don't care who else lands here, I'm going to take it. I'm going to cre clear out every other opponent there and roll on through. He's got a chance to go up the hill potentially for bowlers oh, wow. if those remain uncontested. He has a free legendary chest right here in the middle. And look at the inventory already. Blue pump shotgun, gold tactical AR, gold standard AR, a mini bandages. He's got brick for days here. The resources are incredible. Yep. A loadout already. He just needs some mobility. Maybe drop one of the ARs, depending on ammunition at a certain point. Got to find some shadow bombs. Even the, the oh light boy might be worth it. We'll see if he swaps out. He actually puts down that attack AR and grabs a purple grenade launcher. And the zone right and there fire. as well. Oh my god. Only one other player land here. That's Clipnode. So it's going to be Tifu versus Clipnode for control of the block, unless right. Clipnode decides to say, Whoa, rotate whoa. away. I've got a lot of respect for that gameplay. He knows. Block as well. Clipnode always landing here too. We'll go ahead and fall away. And folks, I think as a sign of uh, respect for Tifu as a player, they have forfeited the rest of Block to this man as he's already at 190 total HP and a fantastic inventory rotating here towards Fatal Fields. Class on your screen. Bucky there as well. Class currently with a little bit of a mixed inventory, but this is what we talked about yesterday. If you play Fortnite, you know that in the Fatal Fields core maze, there is Luke, well, guess what? Just floor spots all Typically, over. you and I, I'm sure, Ben, break all the break all the corn oh, down. We farm it on up. These players know the exact route of where the loot is while it's hidden in the corn because they've studied this area of the map so much. It's the little things that make the biggest differences. Class right now looting, and no one has any clue where he is. Lucky in the long barn, grabbing. There's two chests spawned here, plus any of the floor loot possible along the way. Little side stalls, so quite a bit of wood to farm up. He's got a couple little forests. He's got the, the fork knife quarry there, plus the ship up top. He can take that slip all the way to the top. He's got an opportunity to, to uh, travel basically uncontested early game, unless somebody maybe gets a couple shots from a distance. Meanwhile, over here at Mega Mall, Pika and Keen Star hanging out inside the shops. Quite a few chests, a lot of verticality inside. Tends to lead to audio based fights. Try and figure out whether your opponent is above or below and uh, how much these players play. If they're keen on those audio cues, they'll know almost immediately. Rotating now, down to Lucky Landing. Boog on the screen. Stacy there as well. First stink bomb coming on through. Doesn't actually wind up connecting with too much. 16 builds in total. Now remember, we do play with siphon settings on. So if you get an elimination, you earn 50 HP. So if you're at 74 total health, you'll gain 26 HP to go to max and 24 shield. Also, when you get the elimination, even if the opponent has zero materials, they'll still drop 50 of each material type. So there's a lot of, especially early game reward, Dr. Lupo, in securing some of these eliminations. Now, Snazy right now with the top down on his opponent, it looked like he's trying to use the stinks and that proximity grenade launcher just to try and find even one hit. Uh, which at this point with such low ammunition, he's out of stinks now. He still has the three proxy grenade launcher shots. He's kind of burning through resources. I was going to say, he sees those grenades. I was thinking exactly that. Yep. Well, just but trying to find a bead at this point. He knows based on the audio, Bugga is rotating back and forth in this little brick tunnel underneath. No tags quite yet. Minus a little bit of HP with the stink earlier. Snazy still has the high ground here. Not a ton of materials, 18 builds. At some point, he's going to have to opt to either push this or rotate away. And now might be the time to rotate away, unless yeah. Bugga's going to push from behind. We'll see here. Big up. Oh, wait, actually, not no, even Lord, has a Never mind, he already has a gold combat number four slot there. Easy Bugga separating from each other a little bit, not necessarily pressuring. Early game pressure at game one of six of the World Cup solos would be. Could, could be pretty adv advantageous to get that, that siphon. He's looking for a shot, the heavy snipe. Short goes, and not quite enough 
Bugamus is just behind us. Snazy sneaks away from the higher floors of that north side building in Lucky. Yeah, Booga winds up seeing that middle cherry blossom tree get knocked down. And a lot of times in competitive games, players will just hit the trees down to 50 total HP left, but they won't fully remove them from the map because the animation of the tree breaking gives away your position. So if you want to make sure you stay a little bit more hidden in your games at home, only break trees down to 50 total health left and lead them. You'll get a ton of materials, but you'll also still remain as hidden as possible. Benji Fishy, a player with very high expectations for not only himself, but from the community here this weekend. Did play yesterday, I believe placed 14th with his duo, Mr. Savage. The first stink bomb comes on through, and with that damage, it looks like Benji Fishy wants a fight, but unfortunately does take 50 immediately from the back, and we'll go ahead and just give up his position for the moment. A little bit of frustration on his face, and I can't blame him. Shots as he's attempting to push a little bit on Nate right there. Pleasant Park still inside the safe zone, so moving away from this doesn't have to happen just yet. We'll see. Nate takes an opportunity, rotates all the way across to that treehouse building in the southwest corner. Meanwhile, southwest of the entire map, Prue not alone down here. A little bit of a build fight back and forth, and they are not inside the zone. 91 players remain right now. Only nine have gone down. It's early in the game. It's going to stay very, very high in the player count. Prue may be waiting to see if that edit comes through. Doesn't quite. Storm waiting inside. You, we see this all the time. Just holding the edit inside the pyramid. Yep. He doesn't want to step out, potentially get shot. He'll rotate back down underneath and maybe check his other sides. Meanwhile, King and Wiki in a 1v1. King on the defensive. At this point, he might have the high ground. Oh my gosh. Sneaks the shotgun shot in right before the ramp can go down. Wait. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. no. And you see King, a little bit of a smirk right there yesterday when we had a little bit of a, maybe I guess you could say trash talk in the game. It was a skeptic who winds up going down to Mongrel Mitro. This time I think King will live to see another fight, but ooh, I like some of this little spiciness to kick off game number one. As he wins that fight with a quick wall retake and edit on through. Over to Neo Tilted. Creo, Hornet, and Clicks currently within a couple buildings of each other. And you see on your screen in the backside, Lechi, Ma, and Mongrel still there as well. Slider Moyes rotating through, looks like on a ball on the backside. Real quick, we'll put the replay up of exactly how that played out. Storm here, stuck inside that box just moments ago. No. Oh. Full send into the air and does catch the shots there. The burst SMG proving useful even midair. Burst SMG, probably not the exact item the players want, but still making use of it. Uh oh, it's a corn fight. Dr. Lupo, you're used to this in Nebraska, as right like, now we've got like Rogue home Shark. Me, Jack. Yeah, this is, I mean, you've got a ton of skill in this one. As uh, we see Rogue Shark currently dropping down the bandage for the moment. Already the oh. ramp goes through, and Rogue Shark just wasn't ready for it. So if he didn't catch what happened right there, Dr. Lupo, quick little breakdown. The campfire was placed, he lost control of his wall, but because he had no pyramid inside his box, the opponent placed a ramp and then edited past the ramp for extra cover. It's one of the fastest but most effective ways to take out an opponent when they're inside their one by one. Left eye did just get an elimination. Does use that shockwave to get away from e -Rouse, but solid start as well. And I believe I did just see a fan favorite in Vivid in the elimination feed picking up his first elip. Storm starting to move. We have 56 seconds. My apologies before the next circle closes. And it is a big crunch to the center of the map. You might not be able to see in the bottom right there, but folks, it is just northeast center from Neo Tilted. Everyone is going to get pushed together into the city. Let's see here. Dubs. Trying to push from the outside of Flint knock his opponent to rotate away, and Dubs does not want to let them go. 46 back to back hits, and he can't find a bead on Evil Mare. Goes down out here at the old Greasy Grove Ice Lake. And you see Evil Mare with still just in total about 80 HP. Got the 50 back for the elimination, so when you when you calculate it, really only had about 30 health left. So Dub so close, but not able to connect with that final combat shotgun shot. And Dr. Lupo, look at this inventory for Riverson for oh. Team Liquid. Six shockwave grenades, two minis, three chug splashes, a launch pad. Weapons a little bit awkward, if I'm going to be honest. Just a scoped assault rifle and a uh, epic tactical shotgun. But Storm Surge is coming to play. And Dr. Lupa, we haven't really touched on that yet today. 
inform the viewers at home as to exactly what this what this is. So Storm Surge is a mechanic to prevent players from potentially sitting and, and not engaging in fights. If there are a certain number of players at this point, when there's over 70, when the circle closes, people are going to start to take 25 damage every tick. That's every five seconds. Yep. Unless they are over the threshold for the amount of damage done in the lobby. It's a way to encourage players to get engaged in fights without having to force anybody. You can't really just sit still the entire time. You've got to get engaged, get, you know, get involved with what's going on. And it ends when we reach, when we go below that threshold. Exactly. Bring up this first threshold, you have to drop below 70 players. So Storm Surge will remain in play right now until 69 players is reached. You see Booga with an elimination, Blaster with one as well. Players above the damage threshold sitting pretty right now, but players who are below it, they're frantically searching for some damage they can do to try to get themselves in a safe spot. Aqua on your screen, one of the World Cup duo champions from yesterday. Just outside of SD Divot, shots inside here. Colorful trying to rotate back away. Doesn't want to quite get caught just yet. Those splashes, by the way, one of the best healing items in the game right now in scrimmages and competitive Fortnite. An instant throw, 20, and it's HP or shield. It will transfer across both. May not be able to get the soft quite yet. It's got to cancel. He did, he did. Oh, he did indeed. Yep, yep, yep. Current supply pressure from the side. Not a lot of ammunition right now in the inventory. Only 70 medium rounds for that heavy AR. Not the favorite for a spray weapon. And Great at tap fire at a distance, though. Look at how dead center this zone is in the bottom right of your screen. Mr. Savage did just get an elimination down on him off. And Mr. Savage still alive in this one. Looking to bounce back from yesterday. I know Mr. Savage wasn't too happy with the final performance. Kurtz still, we saw the player piece on him. From this Brazil trying to rep for his family. Class with elimination there as well onto Twins. And Storm Surge is now active for the players still above. So people will begin taking damage. And that's a solid chunk with that common tactical shotgun. But another player begins to throw their name into the hat. Doc Ufo Kurtz, no more shield left. We'll back up for the moment. At this point with the circle where it is, we've got 60 seconds before things start to close. And I would say maybe a third of the field is still outside of the next safe zone. You're going to see a lot of players pushing to Loot Lake. And you have to realize if you're watching at home, if you're here at Arthur Ashe Stadium, competitive Fortnite is very much about late game strategy and positioning. 74 players right now remaining does not surprise us in the, in the slightest, to be honest, especially with how much money is on the line. Harrians goes down. Star picking up that one, but not enough damage dealt. You see the storm surge. Two more players did get eliminated. I think he just got up up now as players began to drop. So Wakey, Wakey went down to the storm, Skype with an elimination onto Astonish. So we are one player away from the end of storm surge, and there it is as we just hit the threshold. So now no more panic has to come through for these players for the moment. The next one will come into play in a couple more zones as Keenstar right now, the double qualified player from France, currently set on up against Envy's Bucky as they are within a couple boxes of each other. Just to see exactly where things move through here. Just want to hold these edits and look out. No reason to apply too much pressure just yet. He's kind of waiting to see other players that may be around him rotating away, and that's exactly the play. Bucky, by the way, uh, a player that we've seen competitive qualifiers. He actually spent some time talking to Hogman a lot to refine his gameplay and his drop. We've seen a big improvement since then. Quick shout out to Hogman for helping Bucky out with that one. All the way here to the World Cup solo finals. Will he use one of the campfires in, in the inventory for 25 extra health? It depends, on the, of yet. it depends on the play. If he's looking towards late game, he's going to try and hold on to those for a heal off potentially when this, that final zone starts to close. We'll have to see. A quick reminder, by the way, on the right side of your screen, a victory royale. The win is worth 10 placement points. Those are big. Top five is seven points. Top 15 is five. Top 25 is three points. And every single elimination for these players is an additional point. Here we go, the focus of the current map right now. A lot of players out here on the hill. Northeast side of Neo Tilted, actually a pretty good spot. You have multiple slips nearby while those are still on. You have to remember those do turn off. Sky picking shots, I believe that's on DRG just to the south. No pressure applied there. He's trying to sneak any shot he can through. Actually, it's challenged. Surprises me, doesn't go for the build there to protect and get a better spot. Wow, that's Outside solid damage box, though. Just go for it. Solid damage and what, look what's also on the ground right there. The legendary infantry rifle. 
Still can swap to that when needed. Right now, choosing to go with the spray weapon. This is a player that's close. We have a replay coming on in soon of Mega from FaZe, who played yesterday in the duos competition with Dubs. Dubs already dropped this game. We'll see how Mega plays this one. Gets in the opponent's box. Two clean shots. And there it comes minutes. through. And near max materials, slurp juice, as well as chug splashes will be sitting pretty with the inventory right there. The next zone did just pop on up moving to kind of the eastern side of the current zone. And what we're seeing right now from Skite is Skite recognizes he's got extra materials back. So he's going to run back, build out a little bit, grab the excess materials, and continue to tunnel with these mats. He's also juggling items over as well to still have the ability to use these whenever he would like to wish to uh, in these next zones. Here's everyone on the map, a rocket being fired on the far side. Bizzle there, still on your screen. Commandment, epic whale. Prisonero still boxed up in metal just outside the zone, and Stompy, who was one of the more dominant European players in the online qualifier, still in this one, but Zate, Zate was in the lead with Sap yesterday. Five of the six games, but in the end, not able to close it out. You see, just continuing to spray, is above the damage threshold. This next threshold of players, Dr. Lupo, 50. So, we're about a minute away before it activates. Bizzle with elimination, though, down by the Stacey. At this point, too, you have a lot of players. Crunch is going to start to happen. Player count starting to dwindle. The loadout here in Zayt's inventory, a single shadow bomb going to be used for rotation if he has to. Not quite yet, though, he's already in the next safe zone. That heavy sniper rifle we just saw moments ago, and he'll probably go for it again. He's going to knock out a wall and immediately swap to that legendary AR to try and take shots while the wall is gone, while well, the player may not be paying attention. This is the big one right here. Immediate swap, a 69 shield pack, solid crit through the wall. They do box up, but it looks like at that moment he saw the box was being pressured from another player and decided to go for it. Keep in mind, here we go. Keep in mind, no healing for Zayt, so you can see just how cautiously he's taking these fights. Oh yeah. Also today in solos, there's no longer the threat, Dr. Lupo, of the double heavy sniper. Sure, we've seen solo players try to use it to their advantage by themselves, but it just is not the same effect. Lol boom, bottom right of your screen, Zayt top left of your screen, both with two late eliminations so far, and here comes Storm Surge for players pushing on in. Not a threat for Lol Boom as he's 409 above, but Karhu did just go down to that Storm Surge, so an unfortunate game number one there, and ooh, some free shockwave grenades to pick up Dr. Storm will be extremely useful in these rotating zones, and oh man, Lol Boom is eating this Stink Bomb. 50 damage, Dr. Lupo. Terrible, terrible spot to be in for Lol Boom. Lol Boom, a solo Irishman, qualified for the World Cup here. Gonna have to push on through and try and make his way to the next safe zone. Multiple ballers on the outside. He might be able to grab that one in the water right there if he sees it when he pops out. The way you see Vivid on your screen. Evil Mare still there as well. Saw him rotating in, multiple ballers still on the field. Look at that. Look at the, yeah. Oh this, is like, this is like a Fortnite World Cup apartment complex. <laughs> you have countless players stacked in next to each other. Bizzle going for the edit reset, can't quite catch himself just yet. Muga still making plays happen. A lot of people have him high up on the leaders, and here it is again. Yarkos with the elimination from earlier on, down onto Aqua, who obviously was our Fortnite World Champion yesterday in duos. Rough start in game number one. Bizzle, one of the most consistent and winningest Fortnite pro players of all time, Dr. Lupo. When you say a veteran in Fortnite competitive, Bizzle is at the top of that list, but here's Yarkos again. Now on the high ground after that first elimination down onto Aqua, looking for more right now as he's got ultimate high. This is one of the best spots in the game right now. We'll have to see where the map is going to rotate, the north, northwest, so he's going to have to make a move soon. Very hefty weapon loadout. Not a whole ton of rotation. Does have the two launch pads, does have the redeploy, but those are going to leave you exposed up in the air. A little look back, King. Rotation here. The feet starting to light up. 38 players. Oh, yeah. And that count is going to go down, down, down. Zayt eliminated by left eye. Colorful taking up. Another one out as well, King. Four eliminations. You have to remember, placement points don't kick in until top 25, so he only has those four. So those are four very, very big points. 
Here we go. The storm starting the pressure players. You're going to see a lot, of, a lot of launch pads and redeploys coming to play. And those community movement mechanics like launch pads placed on the ground would be tough. A player actually just flew oh. right through <laughs> King's box. That could have been bad, up. Dr. Lupo. That could have been real bad. Bottom. Maybe a trap play from either player. We'll have to see here. Benji Fishy in the feed taking another elimination. Top 35 now. Jacks were coming 30 seconds away from the next circle. And Mr. Savage trying to contest. Uh, contest Rux for height as they both continue to build on up. Mr. Sam Savage goes for the shot. Rux gives it up for the moment. So game one right now, the height goes to Mr. Savage, but there's still a ton of time left on the low ground right now. You've got Pika week, class week, Fleddermoy's week, Toozy week as well. Mr. Savage has shot down Rux for the moment. He still continues to keep height. Yarkos though looking to challenge right now. 27 players left. Placement for points it. about to come into play. Yarkos takes the ultimate high in the backside there. Riverson from Team Liquid flying across right to left of your screen. Multiple players. Ultimate low ground warriors down there both in and out of ballers. Class looks like he might be Ooh. a campfire in the middle of it. Mr. Savage. King! Rocket. King at seven oh limbs! Gosh. And it's made it into placement. King Absolutely. The number one performance so far in game one. 120 in total HP. Can he find us a limb? No! As the crowd erupts. Top 20 now, though, but King got the job done. There was 27 players left, Dr. Lugo. King eliminates the last two to make it a top 25 for the placement points. Huge plays there. Wayland Kurtz Ooh. going down to the feed. What a shot and a quick Ooh. edit swap there. Luga showing why he's one of the most active. Top 15. Players. Top 15. Mag with an Elim. Your feet in the top left. One of the most important things to watch if you're looking for players' names. Here's going to have to wait and bait players out. Movement now. Here it is. The Shadow Bomb for rotation. He's still got two more in his inventory, which this late in the game is huge. He does have three Shockwave grenades as well, in case height needs to be taken, or even a long range rotation. Eight players remaining, Jack Yarkos. Four eliminations, everyone in here getting those placement points. Oh. Beam from above, and no goes build. down. Yeah. No builds, gonna be tough there. Saw him picking up that Elon Booga though, five. Right now, moving forward. But not only that, two Shadow Bombs left, still with Shockwave grenades too. The number one point we've seen in competitive Fortnite this weekend, when do you use the Shockwave to go for height? It's Som currently on height. Booga sees that. That was him taking a look for exactly where the player is. I think it's time, Dr. Lupo. We go. Shadow Bomb will be used. Okay, so not quite you're doing it yet. looking for a high ground. Yeah, with that, I was looking to see. He's saving those. Don't you worry. I guarantee before too long, a player like this is going to make plays. Sitting the edge of the storm. The box up. He's going for edit shots. Big hit. My gosh. On the outside. Booga picking up his sixth elimination. Creo, Rux, Booga all on the low ground. Bella EU, oh, all one player, one player to shock the height. It's still some up top. Still got it. Same floor as Creole. One v one up top. Two one v one on the bottom. Stuck in the box. Big hits. Back to back shots. Booga picking up another elimination. Booga is insane now. Almost going to be his game to win. We'll see here another one. Can he find the ninth elimination and the first victory royale? The World Cup solos. Doctor Lupo, it might be time soon. It might be time soon. Booga, Booga smiling. He's got the health advantage on Creo. He does. Folks, it might be time for the Shockwave play. Booga could soar up into the sky. Go for it. Here it is. Shockwave to height. Shots coming in. No elimination yet for the first game victory royale. Oh, my gosh. Confident play from Booga.